You know what to do? What? Remember? That's it. Hello, everyone! It is actually Sunday. We're doing a Saturday, Sunday, come find Cinema Saturday Super Wicked Awesome Special Edition. A beer and song of the day. Hello, everyone. Hope you're all doing well out there. I'm doing awesome as always. Wicked awesome. It's been a wicked busy weekend. Family, friends, family stuff, company, lots of good times. Not much for the computer. And of course, my niece, Allie. And we played Uno last night. Yep, we sure did. That's right. Well, folks, Cinema Saturday features my favorite trio of them all. The Three Stooges, of course. And yes, folks, I have all 190 um, 20-minute episodes from 1934 through uh, 59. Last one was recorded in 58. 24 years, these guys went awesome. Did he sell any more, though? Um, well, they did movies after that. I mean, of course, originally you actually had Mo, Larry, and Shem, who did a movie in 1930 called From Soup to Nuts. They were originally a vaudeville act. And then... Uh, Shemp left was replaced by Curly. As you see on the bottom, you got Mo, Larry, and Curly. That was the most um, that was the most popular of the uh, three Stooges right there. Um, as you see. Huh? And as soon as we get done, we'll watch more Three Stooges. What the? And then, of course. Curly had a stroke in 1946, and uh, we went on to uh, Shemp, Molary and Shemp again. Shemp came back. And then when Shemp passed away in 1955, got to keep him in order, very important. We had Joe Besser that took over. And of course, after Joe Besser left the Stooges after a couple years, uh, Curly Joe Dorita was the sixth and final Stooge, and. Uh, he looked very much like Curly Howard, actually. It's pretty funny. And he wasn't a bad stooge. Joe Besser, mm, so-so at best. How come Mo, Larry, Curly, and Shemp were awesome, though. Was that? How can you have to keep them in order? Because that's just the way I am. Everything's got to be in order. I'm a perfectionist like that. Like well, folks, this stack right there? Like this stack right here. Like, I keep everything together. It's important. Well, folks, um, today's unofficial right. sponsor of our show. Let's give it up for Prosper. Because my good friend Big McLarge Huge, Justin Dimmick, Captain Captain Big McLarge Huge, um, he just released his first episode of Prosper. Live long and prosper, baby. Go check it out on the Facebook. If you're a Star Trek fan, trust me, this guy knows more about Star Trek than you do. Okay? Uh, take the challenge if you don't believe me. Um, he's the one who created the Band Song of the Day Facebook page. Big help. I'm so proud of him. Another one that's gone on their own and done great things. He's more of assisting my good friend uh, Pistol Marie, who I actually met her through this guy. My man Kevin Sherman. Now, Kev, I know you're a Three Stooges fan as well. Um, and Justin, I know you definitely are. Yeah, brother. With Kevin Sherman, you've been helping out our dear friend Pistol Marie with Pistol's Place. And I want to give it up for Pistol's Place. She's a real sweetheart of a lady and a big-time fan of our show and Paige. And, uh, Kev, you've helped me out so many times in the past as well, former admin of the show and page. I want to give, give it up for my two awesome former admins, Justin Dimmitt, Kevin Sherman. They've gone on to bigger and better things. Hey, while us little people doing bigger and song of the day, we just keep it going. We're like an Energizer Bunny. We just keep going and going and going. Anyway, so there's your unofficial sponsor. Check out Pistol's Place. Check out Prosper. Look for them on the Bear and Song of the Day Facebook page. We've liked them as the page. If you can't find them, hit me up on my personal account, and I will help you out. All right? I'm parched. I need adult beverage. Power beer consumption at press. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go big. I need a big, bold beer. Why not? Nina says you go crazy. Oh. Green Flash Brewing Company. Double Stout. Black Ale. Ah, oh, big, bold, complex. And it says you go crazy when you drink beer. Or Only wine. if I drink too much. Or wine. Or wine. 
Says you go crazy. Ah, I go crazy anyway. 8.8%. Definitely some wicked strong stuff. This stuff's out of San Diego, California, the land of fruits and nuts, otherwise known as <laughs> Southern Oregon. Yeah. Probably be opening up brass pump technique. Here we go. How do you do that? How do you not fly? Because I'm good. When you've drank as many beers as I have and opened as many beers as I have, you become a professional. 45 to grand, right in your beer, some shit, apparatus, right over the keyboard, some shit, damn good, have a spill, have a spill, drop yet, never have, never will. Strong, with that drop. Cheers the beers, all of you pros, they say in Germany, goodbye, they say in Japan. Speaking of Germany, congratulations to Germany, World Cup champions, wicked awesome job. Anybody but Brazil makes me happy, because the Brazil, Brazil is the New York Yankees of international football, aka soccer. So yeah, love it. Way to go, Germany. We drink to Germany. Prost! Mm. Oh, my God. Big solid A on this here beer. A for awesome. All right, folks. What we're doing is we're going to combine the birthdays from July 12th and then July 13th, along with a very special wedding anniversary. I'm going to do that first and foremost, all right? And in the meantime, let's bring out... Every single, oh no, we'll bring out Pop Goes the Weasel, their famous 1934 punch drums music. There you go. Now this one was from the 1934, this is the second, the second Three Stooges short, Punch Drunks, Curly's a Boxer. And every time you hear Pop Goes the Weasel, he goes crazy. He goes from being a cream puff into a vicious contender. So there we go. Anyway, there's also one three little pig skins with a very young Lucille Ball who is only 30, uh, 22, 23 years old. And she was gorgeous. Alright, well folks, from July 12th, yesterday, my man Wayne Lowry, badass cook dog, but I know from good old California and the land of fruits and nuts, otherwise known as Western Nevada. Wayne, what's going on? How you doing? Hope you're doing well. Haven't heard from you in a long, long time. Love to hear from you. Drop me a line. Hope you have a wicked awesome day. Hope your birthday was awesome. Celebrate well and enjoy. Cheers and beers. We'll see you. See, it works with soda, too. Except when it's... Uh, Soda's more fizzy, though. Yeah. Oh, I know what makes this good, Anna. You do? Yep. Ready? All right. Look at that. I haven't spilled a single drop. Pretty awesome, huh? How awesome is that, Allie? Wicked awesome. Huh? Wicked they, awesome. There you go. They couldn't hear you, so. I just mix it. There you go. <coughs> Make it more flat, though. Mm. All right. Next birthday from yesterday, my man Tim McMahon. That's a comical nap wizard I know from jolly old England, living in Oklahoma. That's right. Northern Texas. Same damn state. Um, Tim and his wonderful, gorgeous, better half Cammy, a real sweetheart of a lady, originally from Kansas. That's right. Tim's originally a New York guy. Grew up in Tennessee. He's a wicked hardcore Yankees fan, but we don't hold it against him. Um, still a great man. In fact, Tim was a guest co-host. I think my first ever guest co-host, not counting my precious little princess daughter, Delilah. But I, I believe Tim was my first ever guest co-host on Beer and Song of the Day, and that was a crazy episode a couple years ago. <laughs> oh, yeah. Probably the most uh, adult language episode we've ever had. That was something. Um... My wife saw that and was like, yeah, you can't be like that. So I've kept that a little bit more tame over the course of time. But Tim, hey, what do you expect? Well, us Northeast guys, you know, we got a very colorful uh, vocabulary, don't we? Oh, yeah, we do. Tim, miss the hell out of you. Miss working with you. Always great hearing from you. Brother, have a wicked awesome day. And uh, hope your birthday was phenomenal. I know Cammy spoiled the, better half, the, the hell out of you. She is the better half. We all know the woman is the better half. And I'll drink to that. To the McManuses, I say cheers and beers.
All right, screw it. Let's do it. Let's bring it out. Every single opening theme from the Three Stooges. This is like 12 minutes long. Just enjoy it. That's the original one, 1934. With the Columbia Torch. Columbia Pictures, baby. All right. Well, my good friend Michelle Ross had a birthday yesterday. And uh, happy birthday to you, Michelle. How you doing? Hope you're doing well. I know her from the old Mafia Wars. That's why it's all about lack of smuts and schmuckettes. Great way to get rid of pent up frustration. She's a great help. And I enjoy helping her out as I help all my Mafia Wars and Mafia ads. Hell yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work powers and numbers. Michelle, happy birthday. Have a wicked awesome day. Celebrate well and enjoy. Cheers and beers. Well, happy birthday yesterday, she said. My man Freddie Spano had an anniversary yesterday. Him and his wonderful better half, a real sweetheart of a lady. I know they're from jolly old England. In fact, Freddie and his wonderful better half, they won the 2013 um, Valentine's Day contest on Beer and Song of the Day. And Freddie's like me. He's a wicked hardcore New England sports fan. Oh, uh, we had a contest. Whoever got the most likes on the picture of themselves became the Valentine's Day couple on Beer and Song of the Day. Yes, they did last year. Um, anyway, whew, I had soap paste earlier for dinner. I'm stuffed. Um, Freddie, happy anniversary! 17 years of exquisite, wicked, awesome, big. Uh, huh? I'm four or five. Four or five? Four or five. Oh wow! Yeah, it's because you like to eat. Yes, you did. Um, and Freddie, to you and your wonderful better half, I say congratulations. 17 years of amazing marriage. Awesome stuff. Cheers and beers. And hope you enjoy the show. Our Red Sox took two out of three against the Astros, thankfully. Alright. I gotta give a shout out real quick. To the wonderful family that was over. The lovely Ruiz family. David is gorgeous, better half Amanda. We know they're from jolly old England. They live right down the road from us down here in Yeehaw, Texas. Otherwise known as Southern Oklahoma. Same damn state. Yeah. Now, aren't they awesome? They're phenomenal, huh? And then they're four wonderful kids just amazing children. You like this song, huh? Here. Get it. Oh, that's what happens when, you know, Mo, Larry, and Curly, they do that type of stuff. They slap each other in the face. All kinds of stuff. I want to do that. I want to see if I don't have to do that again. What? Go ahead. Can we do that again? Ugh. Okay, Justin and Robin Dimmitt, yesterday, you got together nine years ago yesterday, and what an amazing relationship that's been, an amazing couple, Justin and Robin, who by the way, won our country promotion, country representation contest back on July 1st, they represented Japan, both wearing kimonos, awesome stuff, um, Justin, I've already mentioned, Robin is better half just an amazing sweetheart of lady and absolutely beautiful, too. Hell yeah! Excuse me. Well, happy ninth anniversary to the two of you from yesterday. Cheers and beers. Now, this is my personal favorite um, intro song of the three stages. I love this song. This one was used around 1935 or 33, like 37, 38, I believe. All right. Um, we had a trivia question yesterday. And my good friend Larry Lavery, a, um, a GAC dude, GNC Posse, GCS Posse, GAC Posse member, legend of a man, a great friend of mine that I know from good old California, land of Puchinets, otherwise known as Northern Mexico. Originally from Ohio, 
represent the Ohio State University. My man Larry Lavery. We asked the trivia question. Simple. Um, which members of the Three Stooges were brothers? And you said it. You said Mo, Curly, and Shem. Indeed they were. Shemp was the oldest of those three. There were actually two other older brothers, but so they were the three youngest of the uh, Horowitz brothers, um, which they changed to Americanized power. They're all Jewish, too. But yeah, um, Jerome, Jerome Coley Howard, um, you had um, Shemp, Sam Shemp Howard, and um, Moses, Moses Horowitz, Mo Howard. Of course, you nailed it. Because Larry Fine was just a friend of theirs. He was not a brother. And then, of course, Joe Besser. <laughs> uh, Joe DeRita. Though he looked like Curly. No relation. All right, Larry. Wicked awesome job. You nailed it. Big love, Dr. Salute to you. Oh, oh, yeah. Way to go. A true stooge indeed you are, Larry. No doubt about it. I don't know. I just do. I want to give some shout outs real quick to some other Three Stooges fans. Put a question out there. I said, who else is Three Stooges fans? Like my good friend Chris Crowley. That's right, come from that was over for it down here in Yeehaw, Texas, otherwise known as Western Louisiana. Chris, for you, brother, I present the Three Stooges. Same to you, my man, Lauren Ladson. A badass leader of men, women, and it's I know from Jolly old England, living in Italy, if I'm not mistaken, um, living the good life, and brother, always a pleasure playing the Mafia Wars with you as well. Thank you, you just helped me out tonight. Thank you so much for your support. Lauren, you support like a double D bra. Underwire. That's support, baby. Who be three in the house? And then my man, uh, Zach Ditto. I just got done playing in uh, Song Pop. I know you got a game waiting for me right now. I'll get to it after this here show is done. Zach Ditto, GNC Posse member I know from Exotic Japan. Wicked hardcore fan of the Ohio State University. Lima, Ohio. That's right, representing. Hey, see, Larry. There you go. Uh, Zach Ditto, a great friend of mine. Uh, cheers and beers to you, Zach. Cheers and beers to you, Lauren. Cheers and beers to you, Chris. Stooges, baby. Damn right. Cheers and Rupia. The lovely, gorgeous, amazing Renee Phillips. A real sweetheart of a lady. Renee, I hope you're a stooge as well. And you and my good friend Tim McMahon is both big time fans of the Tennessee Titans. Awesome stuff. Um, Renee, best damn cashier in all of Yeehaw, Texas. Easily. No doubt about it. A great friend always helped me out. And a multiple fan of the week winner. Renee, oh, it's a battle right now. It's so close. I think somebody got you this week. You had it. Somebody just recruited a plethora of fans. Yeah, the likes on the Bear Song of the Day page just jumped up. Amazing what happens when you catch up on three weeks worth of our photos day. I got a hard to post. Jeez. Renee, you're going to win fan of the week again soon, I guarantee you. It's just going to happen. It's just a matter of when. Renee, I always appreciate your help. I'm giving you a love doctor salute. Because you're ultra cool, back at, badass, and wicked awesome. Cheers the beer. I forgot about this intro. Uh, Mark Alvarado, a legendable man I know from good old California. Hell yeah. Mark, you, you're a Mafia Wars guy. You're an awesome guy. And I know you've been watching the show every day more and more. Brother, thank you for the support. And I hope, I think you deserve a shout out. You've earned a shout out. You know why? Because you're like Smith Barney. You made it the old fashioned way. You earned it. Yes, you did, Mark Alvarado. Awesome stuff. And brother, cheers and beers. And then we've got my man John Hurt, a cop that I know from jolly old England, a Louisiana guy. He lives in Louisiana, that's right. Yes, John, Louisiana is just southern Arkansas, right? John, brother, 
missed the hell out of you. I know we're going to hang out again soon enough. And you can try to out drink my wife. Good luck. Someday you'll be able to. You too, little boy. Yeah. John, you are a stooge, brother. And I love you, buddy. Not in that kind of way. Don't get excited. John Hurt. She has a beer, brother. John, I have to ask you, bro. Would you like to be a real hunk of the damn beer on some of your day? We can make that happen. Well, for any of you men out there, or any of you ladies out there, who wants to be a real babe of the day? Or a real hunk of the day on Beer and Song of the Day. Here's a heads up. There's another real hunk of the day coming on tomorrow's show. It's going to be exciting. Um, speaking of exciting, how about this? Former real babe of the day. Uh, Danalia Dharma. D-A-N-A-I-L-Y-A. Danalia. Daniela. I don't never knew how to pronounce your name, but Daniela Dharma. Former real babe of the day on Beer and Song of the Day. Stunningly gorgeous. She just had a baby last night. Hell yeah! There you go. I like it when good people breed. We want good people to breed to make the world a better place. Thank you so much, sweetie. I give you a love, Dr. Salute, for that. Awesome stuff. And a big hearty cheers and beers. bunch of birthdays for today. And before I do that, I want to say happy trails to a good friend of mine. Um, I'm going to miss him, but he just accepted a job in, in Midland, Yeehaw, Texas, otherwise known as West Louisiana. Now, Szechuan Chinese Restaurant, by far, easily, the best Chinese restaurant in all of Abilene, Yeehaw, Texas. Hell Hello. 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 It's quite possible that it's the best Chinese restaurant I've ever eaten at. We love that place. Especially the spicy Szechuan wine time. And oh, the orange peel chicken. Oh, the orange peel chicken with the amazing uh, General Sal sauce. That my man, Joey, Joey Sherman hooks me up every time. He is the best waiter in all of Abilene, Yeehaw, Texas. Joey Sherman, dude, we're going to miss you. First of all, thanks for the ad on the old Facebook. This is the show I do each and every day, although I had to combine the two together for this weekend. Normally, the show is about 30 to 35 minutes every day. Um, this one will probably go an hour. Cinema Saturday is kind of like, what a way to end the week. Let's make the weekend memorable. Cin Cinema Saturday pay tribute to some sort of cinema screen item and in this case it's the Stooges baby Joey Hamilton brother good luck with your new job we're definitely gonna miss you over at Chef Szechuan's no doubt phenomenal waiter phenomenal guy phenomenal friend and like me just enjoys life each and every day it's all about treating people right and Joey you have done that my man I'll give you a love doctor salute for that Oh, hell yeah! You damn right! Let's drink the rest of this to Joey Hamilton. Joey Hamilton? I know a Joey Hamilton. Joey Sherman! Hey, no relation to my friend Kevin Sherman that I'm aware of, but hey, you never know, right? So, Joey! Yo, Joey Sherman! A big hearty cheers and beers, my friend. Enjoy. Yep, that's right. Empty as the brain cells of an average Yankee fan. Don't worry, I got a cure for that. <sighs> Good old Moose Drool, baby. Moose Drool Brown Ale out of Missoula, Montana. Big Sky Brewing Company. This stuff is absolutely amazing. 5.1% alcohol by volume. Just a smidge above normal strength. Yep, this stuff, Moose Drool. Don't worry, it doesn't taste like Moose Drool. Well, I don't know what Moose Drool tastes like. Maybe you do. But anyway... This stuff's incredible. Probably opening apparatus, proper technique. Here we go. Oh, 
45 degree angle right into the big substance apparatus right over the keyboard. He's having that damn good heaven's bill drop yet, never have it, never will. Speaking of Montana, I got a good friend of mine who lives that's originally from Montana, living in Massachusetts. And she's mentioned about becoming a real baby today. But she says that she wants to get back into better shape. Hey, tell you what, Jessica Thompson, my dear, you're stunningly gorgeous. An amazing GCS posse member I know from jolly old England. And Jessica Thompson, my friend, you look fantastic right now. So, hey, whenever you're ready, I want to feature you as the real babe of the day on Beer and Song of the Day. Dig and eat. Hell yeah. Crack open a moose drool there, Jess. Let's drink together, shall we, my friend? Cheers and beers. All right. July 13th birthdays. Wow. <clears throat> a plethora of them. Before I do that, let's get to a very special wedding anniversary for today. 18 years ago today, my good friend Mike McDowell married his gorgeous, wicked, awesome, better half candy. 18 years today they've been married. Hey, your marriage is legal. As an adult, three more years, your marriage will be able to drink legally too. Mike and Candy, the pride of Yeehaw, Kansas. That's right, northern Oklahoma. Mike and Candy and their wonderful daughter, Ireland. They're all phenomenal. We miss them. They're living in Florida, the land of the old people. But hey, they're much too young to live there. But hey, somebody's got to be young. Somebody's got to keep the old people taken care of. And that Mike and Candy do. And Ireland too. The only problem with you guys, Yankee fans. Really? You should root for the Royals. Or the Cardinals. The Yankees. <gasps> Gag me with a wooden cooking spoon. But Candy's my second wife. And she's amazing. We know them from jolly old England. He's a bubble chasing badass of a man. And she's an amazing better half. And we love you. We miss you. Happy 18th wedding anniversary to you. And hey, a big hearty cheers and beers to you. Hope you enjoy the show. And go Red Sox. Happy birthday to my good friend Sarah Hall, comic lab wizard I work with down here in Yeehaw, Texas, otherwise known as Northern Mexico. Sarah, loud and proud, a real sweetheart of a lady, an awesome lady, not afraid to tell it like it is, and I dig that. Well, trust me, my better half, she tells it like it is, too. I can never be with a woman that's like, okay, honey. Ah, oh, hell no. Don't work for me. If, if I had a woman like that, I'd never get anything done, believe me. I'll admit that. See, she's yelling at the kids right now. Awesome. Well, Sarah, my friend, happy birthday, and hope you have a wicked awesome day. Party hard and enjoy. Hey, celebrate like it's 1969, minus the acid. Cheers and beers to you. Next on the list, my good friend Christy, Christy Zanker. Now, this is a lovely lady I have yet to meet in person, but like me. She's a big fan of Sergeant Joe Friday and Dragnet. We are huge, 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 huge Dragnet fans. We're fans of old-time radio. Damn right. Christy, you and I were born in the wrong era. No doubt about that. Uh, Christy is younger than me by quite a few years. And she's just awesome. I just met her online like a couple months ago. And by the way, Christy has written... A few phenomenal um, Dragnet fiction um, episodes. They're great. They're so realistic. I've, I've read them now, Christy. I forgot to tell you that. Blown away by the scripts that you've written. Hopefully someday, if they ever have another Dragnet remake, maybe they should take one of your scripts and roll with it. Roll that beautiful meme for you. Christy, my friend, happy birthday to you. Hope you have a wicked awesome day. Celebrate well and enjoy. Cheers and beers. Bad 714. That's right, Jack Webb. You damn right. All right. Got to ask you, Christy. Are you a fan of the Stooges? I would hope so. I would hope so. I got a hunch you are. We love the Stooges. They were amazing. Hey, speaking of Stooges, how about my good friend Phil Cox? Love you, buddy. No homo. 
Phil Cox, he's about the height of the Stooges. Uh, no, actually, Phil, you're taller than the Three Stooges. Um, the Three Stooges, Stooges, most of them were five foot four. You're taller than that. Shep was actually five foot seven, but I think he was the tallest of all the Stooges. Phil Cox, comical nav wizard, a legendary man I worked with in jolly old England. That's right. Um, he worked in Germany for a long time. Phil, I got a hunch you and Sarah worked together, if I'm not mistaken. Phil's living in New Mexico. That's right, eastern Arizona. And Phil, you were born the exact same month, day, and year as my good friend Christy Zanker. How about that, huh? See? Two cool people born in the same exact month, day, and year. How awesome is that? Wicked awesome. That's right. Méchant Genil. French for wicked awesome, eh? You know what I'm saying, eh? So I'm talking about. Hello, oh, Canada. Indeed. You guys still love to our neighbors up north. I know I do. Phil, my friend. Definitely miss working with you. An amazing leader of men, women, and it's. And brother, cheers the beers to you. And I hope you enjoy the show. And I'm sure you're wonderful. God just better have lawyers spoiled the hell out of you, too. Oh, here's a milestone birthday. A badass crew dog. My man James Leonard. That's right, 21. Probably having some amazing fun right here, right now. Because, brother... When you're 21 in the United States of America, yeah, yeah, it's sad that you have to wait that long. My philosophy is, you know, if you're an adult, you should be able to drink like one. These are adult beverages, okay? You know, you can actually go into the military and die for your country, but you can't support your country's alcohol level. That's just wrong. That's as wrong as for rooting for the New York Yankees when you're from, like, <laughs> Kansas. Sorry there, McDowell family. Still love you, though. Oh, Phil Cox is a freaking Yankees fan, too. And he's from Ohio. Come on, Phil. What's up with these damn Yankee fans? And they are the damn Yankees. <sighs> anyway. <clears throat> James Leonard, my friend. Brother, hey. Tip an adult beverage with me right here, right now. As long as you're not working or about to drive. And hey, let's say it. Cheers and beers there, James. And have a wicked awesome day. Party hard and enjoy. Cheers and beers. Alright, next birthday. My man Joey Canna. Joey! I've known my entire life. And, like my brother, he's a fine arts and graduate of Martha's Vineyard Regional High School class of 1992. Although, 1991 was much better. That's the best damn class ever. Joey lived two streets over from us, Lake Street, Vineyard Haven, Massachusetts. Joey's an awesome guy, awesome friend. And, uh, Joey, remember those trips to Maine? Oh, brother, I know I do. Remember those trips to Brockton as well? <laughs> that was interesting. Uh, Joey Canna. A great man indeed, and brother, happy birthday. Celebrate well and enjoy. Cheers and beers. <laughs> Yo, Ralphie! Ralphie Trujillo! That's right, a legendary bubble-chasing badass of a man I worked with down here in Yeehaw, Texas, otherwise known as Eastern New Mexico. Ralphie, a classic car enthusiast, as am I. The difference is he actually owns one, and he fixes it, and... Makes it beautiful and all that good stuff. I don't own one. I'm just a classic. I just need a classic car to go with my classic music in my classic frame of mind. Ralphie, brother, definitely miss working with you. And it looks like you're doing great things. It looks like you got yourself a great job. Mighty proud of you. Some people got to move on to better jobs. You've done that. I'm mighty proud of you. But damn it, brother, I miss working with you. A bubble chase of legend indeed. Ralphie Trujillo, brother, happy birthday to you. Hope you have a wicked awesome day. Celebrate well and enjoy. Cheers and beers. Yes, Ralphie, I had so paced for dinner tonight. Mm. Oh, and by the way, my mother-in-law is here. Guess what's coming? Tamales! Mm. Okay, uh, next birthday, we got my good friend Mike McKercher, a legendary badass crew dog leader of men, women, and it's that I worked with in good old California. Hell yeah. Hey, California. Where else can you go swimming and skiing in the same day? That's right. California. Yes, you can. That's pretty damn cool. Mike McKercher, 
Brother, happy birthday to you. How you doing? Hope you're doing well. Hope you have a wicked awesome day. Celebrate well and enjoy. Definitely miss working with you. Cheers and beers. My God, 35 minutes. I got to really get this show moving. My man, Scott Hendricks. That's right. Another legendary Mafia Wars player. He's been a friend of mine on the old Facebook for years. A great man. A great help. Always appreciate it. Scott, happy birthday to you. And hope you're enjoying it right here, right now, as I'll enjoy it with you. Have a wicked awesome day. Celebrate well and enjoy. Cheers and beers. Another Mafia Wars player. Another damn good one that I've been friends with for a while. Gary Dixon Sr. Yo, Gary, what's going on, big man? How you doing? Happy birthday to you. Hope you're doing well. Hope you have a wicked awesome day. Celebrate well and enjoy. And brother, cheers and beers. All right, the final. No, we got two more birthdays. Both Mafia Wars players. Here you go. Deidre Blankenship. A lovely lady. And an ultra cool badass. A wonderful Mafiaette. Mafiaette. Deidre, always appreciate the help. And happy birthday to you. And hope you have a wicked awesome day. Celebrate well and enjoy. Cheers and beers. And root beer in your case, Allie. I'll clean my ears. I already did, but... Well, thank you for cleaning your ears. We wouldn't want wax build up now, would we? Um, oh, here's a milestone birthday, my good friend Altia Moore. Another Mafia Wars legendary lady. Altia Moore, happy milestone birthday to you. How you doing? Hope you're doing well. I haven't heard from you in a while. I'd well, love to hear from you. So drop me a line. Let me know how you're doing. Let me know how your birthday's going. Let me know how you enjoy the show. Same for all you wonderful birthday folks between yesterday and today. And uh, Altia Moore, happy milestone birthday to you. Hope you have a wicked awesome day. Celebrate well and enjoy. Cheers and beers. Alright. Folks, celebrity birthdays, let's burn through them real fast. Yesterday, July 12th. Have? Huh? How many birthdays do you have? Oh, about 25. I know, it's a lot of people. We get about 40 celebrity birthdays. Watch how fast I roll through these, though. Bill Cosby, 77 years old yesterday. Wow! And he's still going strong. Hell yeah. Brock Lesnar, wrestler, MMA fighter, UFC. And a dick, too. Yep, Brock Lesnar, he is a dick. But he's 37 years old today. Ah, legendary. Um, Olympic. Olympian. That's right. I think she was a member of the uh, figure skating team. U.S. Figure oh, hiccups. Great. U.S. figure skater Jordan Weber. W i e b e r. She's 19 years old today, and she is cute as can be. Yeah, baby, and she's legal. Um, and I'm happily married. Oh, here's a lovely lady that was born this day, 1978. Hey, I know people that were born in this day in 1978. But this lovely lady, although she's pretty thuggish, and she's not afraid to get in trouble, not afraid to go to jail, but she's a badass actress, Michelle Rodriguez. Michelle Rodriguez, 36 years old today. I gotta check my records and see if I've had her as a baby today. If not, it needs to happen. Because she's hot, real hot, damn hot, wicked hot, smoking hot. Here's a legendary African-American scientist. You know the name, George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver, born in the state in 1864, passed away in 1943. A scientist in an era where, unfortunately, blacks were treated as a second-class citizen, and that was absolutely stupid, and that deserves a big, fat GFY. And George Washington Carver overcame that. Kimberly Perry, hot yee country singer, 31 years old today. Hmm. Gives me an idea for Yeehaw Western Wednesday, you know. She's fine. Wicked fine. Uh, LeSean McCoy, Philadelphia Eagles uh, running back, 26 years old today. We're getting into his prime now. I know he's already had a good career, and uh, he's only 26 now. Jeez. Richard Simmons. This dude just doesn't stop. Him and his little tiny shorts and his workout outfit. Richard Simmons has done a lot of great things over the years, though. A lot of people make fun of him and his perm. But Richard Simmons has done a lot of awesome stuff. So, hey, I've always had a respect for Richard Simmons. A little odd, but nothing wrong with that. I'm a little odd myself. So, there. Yeah. He's 66 years old today. 
Ooh, after Cheryl Ladd. Oh, no, I'm sorry, yesterday. This is July 12th birthday. Cheryl Ladd, actress. <laughs> Still looking good. 63 years old today, as of yesterday. Christy Yamaguchi, 43 years old yesterday. Famous uh, Olympics figure skater. United States of America. America. Damn right. Land of the free, home of the brave. How about uh, John Petrucci? That's right. Dream Theater. Dream Theater legend John Petrucci, for, uh, 47 years old today, guitarist, if I'm not mistaken. Christine McVie, of course, one of those two lovely ladies from Fleetwood Mac. She's 71 years old today, as of yesterday. Um, author Henry David Thoreau, born yesterday in 1817, passed away a little too young in 1862, sadly. People didn't live a whole long life back in those days. The legendary. How, what, how old was he when he died? Oh, he was only 44, 45 years old. Yeah, that's too young, huh? That'd be like me dying in four years. Can you imagine that? No, you don't want to. Trust me, I won't be dead in four years. No way. Honestly, in 1895, passed away in 1960, Oscar Hammerstein II. I'm sorry, July 12th. Oscar Hammerstein the second, yeah, Rogers and Hammerstein, all those great musicals. He was born the the um, father of television, as he's known, and rightfully so. Uncle Milty, Milton Burrow, born July 12, 1908, passed away in 2002 at the age of 93. Ah, oh, he was a great comedian, too. Boy, do we miss him. Eric Carr, the Kiss drummer that took over for Peter Chris. Born this day, 1950, passed away, 1991. I'm sorry, I keep saying this day. My apologies. Um, July 12, 1934. He would be 80 years old today, but he passed away in 2013 at the age of 78. Legendary pianist, Van Clyburn. Louis B. Mayer, born July 12, 1884, passed away, 1957. Metro Gold Mayer, pictures, of course, MGM. Um... There you go. There's your July 12th birthdays in a nutshell there, kids. And let's drink to that, shall we? Today's birthdays. About damn time. Harrison Ford. That's right. Indiana Jones. Uh, Han Solo. Legendary badass actor. Uh, Air Force One. Harrison Ford. One of them older hunks that the women and the men that love the men love. Former hunk of the day on appearance on the day. 72 years old today, still going strong. Patrick Stewart. That's right. Hey, anybody a fan of Star Trek The Next Generation? My wife, she loves Star Trek The Next Generation. That's the Star Trek series that ran longer than any other Star Trek series out there. Uh, Patrick Stewart, of course. Captain Jean-Luc Picard. 74 years old today, still going strong. Stephen McQueen, not the, not my favorite actor, Stephen McQueen. He's one of my favorites. Stephen McQueen, the legendary actor from the 1968 um, San Francisco auto chase movie, Bullet. But his grandson, Stephen McQueen, 26 years old today, just like Lee Sean McCoy turned yesterday. They were born a day apart. Julius Caesar. Oh, Julius Caesar, that guy. Gee, I think we've all heard of him. Um, born this day, 100 B.C., passed away 44 B.C. Um, they say he's the first ever born by cesarean, sense, uh, by cesarean section, hence the nickname, C-section. Named after Julius Caesar. Hmm. How about Cheech Marin? Hey, who loves Cheech and Chong? I know I do. Yeah, don't worry. There'll be some Cheech and Chong movie uh, cinema Saturdays coming up down the road. Cheech Marin, 68, and doing great. Yadier Molina, the youngest of the trio of leg legendary Major League Baseball catchers. Yadier Molina, 32, still going strong, of course. Spud Webb, shortest NBA player, player to ever win the slam dunk competition. Only 5'7", had a 48-inch vertical leap. Spud Webb, 51 years old today. Pretty damn good basketball player for the Atlanta Hawks, too. Uh, Nathaniel Bedford Forrest, born this day in 1821, passed away in 1877, and this douchebag hated, hated African Americans, hated black people, period. 
Yeah, good. We hate you too. Big fat GFY. Happy birthday in hell, you dickhead. Um, my daughter just started laughing. Hogan's hero legend Bob Crane, born in the state of 1928, was murdered in 1978 at the age of 49. Sean Waltman, 42 years old today. Well, who's that? X Pog. Hey, one, two, three, kid. Where's my wrestling fans at? Sean Waltman. Oh, you should see his uh, porn pictures with uh, China. <sighs> oh, 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 boy. Scary. At least, oh, she was horrifying to look at. Um, yeah, I'll leave that alone. X Pac, one, two, three, kid. Um, Sean Waltman, 42 years old today. Dee Dee Khan, actress, I remember her on TV show Benson, 63 years old today. Former legendary badass basketball player, David Thompson, 63, 60 years old today. Benny Benassi, DJ, legend, 47. Cameron Crowe, badass actor, 57 years old today. Yeehaw, country singer Louise Mandrill, just like David Thompson, 60 years old today. The late, great Gerald Levert, oh, that phenomenal music group, Levert. Born this day, 1966, passed away at the age of 39 in 2006. Phil Margera. Hey, he's 57 years old today, just like director Cameron Crowe. I'm sorry, Cameron Crowe's the uh, director. Russell Crowe's the actor. Uh, Phil Mar Margera, uh, father of the legendary Bam Margera, who's definitely probably the most famous jackass uh, actor. Phil Margera, his father, 57 today, legendary Republican leader. And badass Buffalo Bills uh, NFL legend, badass football player, Jack Kemp, born this day 1935, passed away in 2009. Ryan Ludwig, baseball player, beast. Cincinnati Reds, 36 years old today, just like um, Michelle Rodriguez, although she's a hell of a lot hotter than he is. And I got friends born 1978 on this day as well. Nin July 13th, 1978. No doubt about it. Truly a wicked awesome day indeed. Empty as a brain cells an average Los Angeles Lakers fan. We got a cure for that again. Oh my God, three beers? Yeah, it's a long show. Sam Adams, Belgian session. Hey, Belgium. Home of the best beer in the world. Sam Adams, my personal favorite brewing company, Boston, Massachusetts. Hey, think globally, drink locally. This stuff's a little weak, though. A lot weaker than a Belgian beer, that's for sure. Only 4.3%, but the flavor's great. Good stuff. So here we go. Um, proper beer winning apparatus, proper technique. Here we go again. Sorry, I get scared that I box. can't believe 48 minutes worth of birthdays and shout-outs. Good Lord. Are you serious? Yeah. I'm serious. 45 degrees, right in the big assumption apparatus. Right the keyboard comes that damn good. Have a spill drop yet. Never have never will. You know what if you did? See, this is what happens when you're too busy to have a um, show every day. It builds up. I refuse to fail to mention birthdays for my friends. It's all about you, the fan and friends out there. I'm here for you. Without you, I'm as worthless as boobs on a boy. That's worthless. <laughs> Just like the brain cells on average in Japan. Cheers and beers to all of you pros in St. Germany. Kampai is in Japan. What's that? Kampai is in Japan. Kampai is they say in Japan. You're right. Wicked awesome job there, Allie. Yeah. Hey, she's only nine, but she's wicked smart. Yeah, and I won at Uno. Wait. And she won at Uno, too. She beat everybody at Uno. Wait, where's the notebook letter? I don't know. Yeah. All right. We finally got through all the shout outs and but celebrity I, birthdays. But I like, I got like four zeros. In like That's because you've got great luck. Just like Eli Manning has great luck, that lucky bastard. <laughs> if he didn't have luck, my Patriots would have whooped his butt. <clears throat> All right. It's time to bring out our, obviously the hunks of the day are going to be the Six Stooges. Duh. The uh, babe of the day is going to be the lady that I think was in the most episodes of the Three Stooges, and she was beautiful. She really was. We'll get to her last, because, you know, you got to say the best for last, because I love my ladies. 
But in the meantime, let's bring out our first hunk of the day. Who better than the one that started it all? As we bring out a good song as well. Um, oh no. I'm having uh, computer problems here. Oh no, no, no. I'm not going to speak for the next six minutes. I'm going to show you Mo Howard. Here's the hunks in order. Mo Howard. That guy. We're going to bring out Mo because that was the original Stooge right there. Um, then, of course, we're going to bring out Larry Fine because, you know, he's an original as well. We're going to bring out Curly because although technically Shemp was the original Stooge, Curly's the one that most people associate with thanks to all these 190 short episodes. Um, then we're going to bring out Shemp who was an original Stooge and then took over for Curly after Curly's debilitating stroke in 1946. And then we're going to bring out Joe Besser, you know, who was more famous as a cartoon voice. He's the only Stooge that was more famous, not because of being a Stooge, but for his other stuff, his other acting, prior to the Three Stooges. And, of course, cartoon voice Babu, 1973, Joe Besser, we'll bring him out. And then we're going to bring out Curly Joe Dorita, who finished it off well. He looked so much like Curly Howard, it was almost scary. And he was in the uh, six uh, Three Stooges movies from 1959 through 1965. And a pretty good Stooge as well. But yeah, Mo Howard, there you go. That is the Stooge of all Stooge right there. And let's bring out some sound bites. Just listen up for the next six minutes. All the Three Stooges audio clips that I found. Put them all together for you, the viewer. Oh, see, they live there. I know. It's going to be about an hour and 25 yeah, minutes. Two bucks. <laughs> Listen up. Yanks won World Series. Can you beat that? Yeah, and I won five bucks. What are you taking a bag for? Yanks always won the World Series back in those days. Right Unfortunately. Right Nobody's new. We'll sell them Ram. in the bottle. <laughs> oh, I can't see. They I sound can't funny, see. huh? What's the matter? I got my eyes closed. Oh, look. The kittle. I'll straighten that. Hello? Oh, what clip joint? He grabs his clip with a neck like that, see? And drags him over to the other place. They do. Mo older and bolder there. Very old there. Lived to be 78 years old. Mo Howard lived in... He was an actor for 66 years, folks. That's yes, Mo and Larry right, right there. Sadly, Larry had a stroke in 1970. Uh, uh, to the age of 78. He did his first movie in 1909 when he was 12 years old. Mo Howard. Look at that bowl shaped haircut. He wore that his whole life. Hello. Hello. The Lorax? Yes, it does, huh? That's probably where the Lorax got his style from with the Stooges. Vitamin APU Stunt Manufacturing Company. Yeehaw! Delilah, are you a Three Stooges fan? Come here. Look, Delilah, look. Go to the eye poke. See? Look. See that? See, she knows what's up. Are you fired? Right. You can't fire him. Why not? He quit. You know I quit my job at that bakery. Right. Oh, I got sick of the dough and thought of going home. Oh! There's only room for one. Ah! Uh, this bed goes back to Henry VIII. That's nothing. We had a bed that went back to see us rope up the third. I'm not sure if that's a young Shamp Howard or Mo Howard because I saw it listed on the both. I had a few too many myself. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hello. Sweet me. Sweet me. K I T T Y. Push me. 
They spelled his name wrong there. But that that's what we always read. That's the first That's the first one that they showed. On the uh, credits in the beginning credits. Wait, which one they just spelled wrong? Curly. C R I O Y. No E on there. Well, he's the one with no. It was kind of a funny thing. See, Curly had short hair. Larry had curly hair. So it was kind of a little joke that he called him Curly. I don't. It's the Three Stooges. They're crazy. I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. I'm a victim of circumstances. See. There you go. The three Howards and Larry Fine. He deserved to be a brother of them. Mo, Larry, Curly, and Shem. Easily the four best Stooges. I've seen that picture with Shep and Mo. Shep and Mo look so similar, it's almost scary. I've seen, actually, I've seen that picture with Curly. I think that's Curly Howard after he grew his hair out. I don't know, folks. I really don't. Either way, there's just six stooges. Shemp, Mo, Larry, Curly, Joe Besser, Joe Dorita. Curly, Joe Dorita. See how Curly, Joe Dorita looks so much like Curly Howard? Flighty. Mo and Shemp look very much alike. Larry and Joe, yeah, they were different. Let's bring on Larry Howard, Larry Fine out. He might as well have been Larry Howard. Well, Larry Fine was actually an accomplished violin player. He's the one with the crazy hair, folks. Larry suffered a stroke in 1970 that killed his... I mean, he, he was in a wheelchair for the rest of his life. Very unfortunate. Passed away January 1975 at the age of 72. Mo Howard passed away from cancer in 1975 at the age of 78. The thing is, Larry Fine had a receding hairline from day one. And he never lost more hair, though. Mo, Larry, and, uh, I think that's Curly Joe. I can't tell. It looks like Curly Joe. Although Larry looks too young to be with Curly Joe there. I don't know. Interesting. Born Larry. No, cur no doubt about that one, folks. <clears throat> Larry Fine in his early days. I swear he always had a receding hairline. It's pretty crazy. Ah, let's bring out this one real quick. You have to listen up, though, and enjoy the show. Young days. This was the early on. Mo, Larry, and Curly. Very early picture right there. It looks like Larry and Shemp. I'm not sure on that one. I think so, though. No question that's Larry Fine. Great middleman indeed. Hello. 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 After a stroke, his final interview in 1973. 
He had a few strokes. Curley had a few strokes as well and passed away at the age of 48 in January 1952. Larry Fine, at least he was older when he had his strokes. He was 67 and lived to be 72. Um, Shemp passed away from a heart attack at the age of 60 in 1955. We'll get to more of that later on. There's Shemp right there with Mo and Larry. Um, yeah, Shemp was perfectly healthy and everything until he passed away from a heart attack one night coming back from a boxing match. Pretty crazy. Larry, later in life, although he was sitting, he was still doing stuff, still active right up until he died. He may have been wheelchair bound after turning after his first stroke, but by golly, that dude kept going. He did not stop living. Larry Fine was a class act all the way. The Three Stooges definitely sorely missed. Look at that, will you? How about that? Mo, Mo, Larry, and uh, Curly Joe Dorita. It looks like Frankie Avalon. How about that? Ah! Shocking. Larry Fine. What an awesome, awesome stooge he was. We got a lot of great uh, facts coming up soon. We slide through the rest of these here pictures of Larry Fine. There you go. Larry Fine. Ultra cool dude. No question about it. Let's bring out that next stooge. Huh. Probably the stooge that made it all what the three stooges were. His famous sound bites, legendary. The youngest of the five Horowitz brothers, Jerome Curley Howard, born 1903, passed away January 1952 at the much too young age of 48. And there he is with Mo. Jerome Howard, the youngest of the five, as I mentioned. In fact, he's in on this with Larry Fine, the original two man quartet. I must have 106 and 7 hits. And he loved wearing hats like that. I actually preferred the flat caps. Kind of like the Greek sailor top. Curly Howe is what made the Stooges funny. Oh, they were all funny in their own way. But Curly... Definitely the most unforgettable speed. Mo was the leader, no doubt. Now that's 1947. Hold that line. That's after Curly had a stroke. That's the last time he appeared on film. Hey, did you see that slide? Although he did disorder in the court in 1949, where he was a chef. It was the scene was deleted. Um, that's Mo, Larry, and Shem with Curly. That's the only time the three Howard brothers appeared on film together was Hold That Lion from 1947. And the scene was less than a minute. It's really unfortunate that Curly was unable to recover from a stroke and uh, had new, a few other strokes. And he was bedridden by the time he died January 18, 1952. Boy, this guy is definitely missed. Oh, he was a riot. Let's talk about those Stooges. Mo Howard, the boss Stooge and brother of Stooges, Curly Howard and Shemp Howard, began his acting career in 1909 by playing bit parts in silent Vitagraph films. In 1922, he, brother Shemp, and Larry Fine joined Rough House vaudeville comic Ted Healy. Ted Healy's been billed as the, as the fourth Stooge. He's the one that um, originally got them going. They formed the act that would become the Three Stooges. They started out as Ted Healy and the Southern Gentleman. Yeah, we know how the Stooges are about the term gentleman. Was comprised of Mo Howard, Larry Fine, and Shemp Howard. The original trio did one feature film called Soup to Nuts in 1930. After which Shemp left the group to pursue a solo career. 
and was replaced by his brother Curly. This incarnation, uh, incarnation of the team was the first to be known on film as the Three Stooges. <clears throat> Ted Healy and the Stooges. Ted Healy um, went with them all the way through to 1937. Well, the Stooges left him in 1932. They went to Columbia Pictures. That's what started the 190 short episodes. Um, yeah, I see how you feel, Curly. <laughs> That's how they felt about Ted Healy after a while. Ted Healy ended up getting murdered in 1937, though. Interesting story. Uh, Howard toward, Mo Howard toward Vaudeville appeared in films with Healy for 10 years before the Stooges left to pursue a separate career. Right after the Three Stooges break up with Ted Healy, Mo signed a contract with Columbia Pictures. Unknown to him, Larry had actually signed with Carl uh, Lamley at Universal Pictures. Carl's uh, niece, Carla, just passed away recently at the age of 104. We did a moment of silence for her. Um, the next morning, Mo asked to see Columbia boss Harry Kahn and explain the situation to him. Kahn called up his legal department, um, which called up Universal's legal department, to check the date and time of the contract signing. According to Mo, Kahn hung up the phone and said, You boys belong to Columbia. Good stuff. Now, Mo Howard appeared in more than 250 films during a 66-year career, including the 193 Stooges shorts. Over the Act's 50-year history, the Stooges went through several personnel changes. Obviously, when, when Mo died, the Act ended. Yeah, you can't have the Three Stooges without Mo. He, he was the glue that held it all together. No doubt about it. Truly the brains of the operation. He was for real life, too. He was the brains of the operation on film. He was the brains of the operation for real. Uh, disorder in the court... Oh, no, that's Malice in the Palace. I'm sorry. 1949. That's Curly with the fake mustache right there. The chef. Um, but sadly, that one did not make the um, make it to the screen. It, made, it hit the cutting room floor. So that picture never made it on film. Therefore, Hold That Lion is the last time they appeared together on film. But this is the last time they appeared together in print as the Stooges. Those four Stooges, I really wish they could have all been together. Because Shep was damn good in his own way. Curly, definitely over the top. Moe, definitely the leader. Larry, just a great um, straight lace that was needed. You can't have a good straight lace without the... Um, you got to have the goofball and the straight guy, you know? Oh, the Larry was quite funny as well. And with it, with that hair of his, probably the most funny looking of them all. So, there you go. Um, Mo appeared, yeah, I talked about that. Sadly, all those movies from 1909 that he was in, that's Curly after the stroke. He was a huge dog lover. Um... Most of the films from that 1909 period were lost when the Vitagraph Film Company burned on July 2nd, 1910. Um, there you go. Again, there's that picture. See, I found that one with Curly as well. And I, that might be Curly because he had a daughter in 1948 and uh, sadly passed away in January 1952. Oh, this is from Nursery Rhymes. That's Ted Healy and the Three Stooges. His Ted Healy and the Stooges. Nursery Rhymes. In color, by the way. Released July 6, 1933. Although the Three Stooges shorts were always in black and white, including their films with the exception of Snow White and the Three Stooges from 1960-61. This one was in color. 1933. And you can find it on YouTube. They've done they've done some colorizing to those three Stooges films. And that looks pretty good. I like it. Alright. Well, let's get to um that next Stooge. And I think this guy was overrated. I really I, I, I'm sorry, underrated. I don't think they give this guy enough credit. 
And this is really cool behind the scenes to see the three Howard brothers together. Mo, Curly, and Shemp. Shemp was born March 17, 1895, passed away November 1955, heart attack at the age of 60. Shemp was awesome. He really was. I think he was a good replacement. I mean, granted, it's hard to follow in the footsteps of Curly, who was the most wild of them all, but Shemp did a damn good job. He really did. I mean, after all, he was an original stooge. So he's na and he's a Howard, so he's naturally funny. Now, Mo had a legal agreement with his fellow Stooges stating that he reserved the right to choose Stooge replacements. Curly was replaced by Shemp Howard, Shemp was replaced by Joe Besser, and Joe was replaced by Joe Dorita. Obviously, Mo, Curly, and Shemp were all brothers. We mentioned that already. How about some Three Stooges sing-alongs? I think it's a good idea. Shep always did that. He had his own shtick. Look at him younger there, huh? Look at that guy. Now, Mo was working on his autobiography when he died, and it was published posthumously as Mo Howard and Three Stooges. It was going to be I Stooge the Conquer. Mo was actually, in private life, a quiet, dedicated family man whose hobbies inclu included reading, playing bridge, and making hooked rugs. The only one of the Stooges who really understood the value of a dollar investments during his salad days left him a wealthy man at the time of his death. Yeah, Mo died rich. He was smart. He truly was the brains of the operation. Funny thing is, when the Three Stooges appeared on local children's show in the late 50s, um, there was a wave of kids poking each other in the eyes. When Mo heard about it, it was the Stooges who came to the rescue. They went on many local TV shows as well as national TV, showed how the eye pokes were done in a way that nobody got hurt. To the kids watching, it was like learning a magic trick. Well, these guys definitely some magical comedy, no doubt about that. And according to Mo, in 60 years, he never missed a performance. Uh, Mo was the business minded one of the group, knew that Curly liked to spend money on partying and women. Larry liked to spend his at the racetrack, so he drew up an agreement with Larry and Curly, turned over a percentage of their salaries to him. He in turn invested it for them. Result was that while Larry and Curly were not as wealthy as Mo, he invested far more of his own money and was quite well off. He ensured that their spendthrift habits did not result in their being broke when the careers ended. See, he was a planner. Mo Howard was quite the legend indeed. And he was also very protective of his brother Curly, who in reality was quite shy and not known to stand up for himself. So yeah, he was, you know, he was kind of a wuss on the screen. He was like that in real life too. Um, let's see. Funny thing is, when uh, Mo and Shemp put on roles for families and friends when they were kids, they used younger brother Curly in female roles. Curly at seven had trouble remembering his lines, so Mo made cue cards on adhesive tape and stuck them to his forehead for Curly to read. Truth be told, Curly, his whole career, could not remember his lines. Um, Mo sold frogs in saloons when he was a child to pay for his fares when he skipped school and instead went to the theater. Mm -hmm. Shemp did that too. He, he skipped school. Now the idea for the notorious gag of eye gouging was during a game of bridge. Shemp Howard leaned over and we poked Larry in the eyes. What? We have to go to bed. Okay, good night. Good night, babies. He, um, Mo poked Larry in the eyes for not playing well. The result was that Larry cried, Shemp apologized, Mo laughed until he fell out of his chair and walked through a glass door. He considered the eye gouge 
the funniest thing he'd ever seen, decided to use it in their act. And that's one of the most famous acts of all time. The old two-finger eye gouge. Hmm. You know, sad thing is the students were never completely aware of how popular or how financially successful they were. It was only after the group stopped making shorts for Columbia that Mo decided, uh, discovered how much more money could have been earned. See, people didn't know back in those days. Nowadays, everybody's all about the almighty dollar. But back in those days, it was all about fun. Um, uh, during production of Pro Pardon My Scotch in 1935, Mo accidentally broke three ribs when the table he was standing on, which was rigged to split in half on cue, split incorrectly. They take they, the take ca that caused the injuries remains in the film, and they actually reused that same take in the short film Dizzy Detectives from 1943. See, the Stooges recycled a lot of their footage, save money that way. In fact, if you watch a lot of old shows and stuff, you'll realize that a lot of a lot of footage. If you watch the entire series, you'll see. Hey, I've seen that before. That's Shemp. Shep with his trademark little um, lip thing that he always did. And Shemp, hey, look at that. I'll tell you, this guy had a successful career outside of the Three Stooges as well. But with the Three Stooges, a true legend indeed. Let's talk about Larry for a moment. As a child, Larry spilled a bottle of powerful, of powerful acid Badly burning his left arm, doctors recommended he take violin lessons as a therapy to strengthen the damaged muscles. Ten years old, he played a solo piece backed by the Howard Landon Orchestra. His parents even considered sending him to Europe to study music. But they decided against that because World War I had begun. Well, that kind of makes sense. All right, well, let's go to our next hunk of the day, shall we? This guy... Definitely the least of the awesome when it comes to Stooges. But I think he was very successful in other areas. I don't think he was a very good Stooge personally. A lot of people don't feel that either. But he had a great voice. It was a great voice in cartoons. I thought he was. And he was funny in his own right. Joe Besser, there he is. The bald guy. I don't think that man ever had hair. I don't know. Joe... Larry and Moe, the Three Stooges, there in 1956, hello, 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 that's when they did that, and Joe Besser, and there's Moe as well, how about that, old Moe, funny Moe, um, when Larry joined the Stooges, Ted Healy often offered him a salary of $90 a week, and an extra $10 if he threw away his violin, <clears throat> during his 40 year film career, Larry only appeared in one film that didn't also feature fellow Stooge Mo Howard. Wow. What's that movie you say? Stage Mother in 1933. How about that? Um, after Larry had a stroke, he never performed again. When Joe Dorita was brought in as, the, uh, as Curly Joe... Mo wanted to make him simply an employee. It was Larry who insisted that he be made a full equal partner. Larry reportedly threatened to quit unless Joe was treated equally and fairly. That's cool. You got to respect Larry fine. Um, Larry's face was actually so calloused on one side from all the years of being slapped. It was all but numb. Yeah, Larry always got hit right here. It got you there. It gets you right here. Larry Fine took a beating for over 40 years. Unbelievable, but true. Um, when first approached to work for the Stooges, Larry Fine was performing at the Rainbow Gardens nightclub under contract for Fred Mann. A few nights after being approached, the police closed the Rainbow Gardens because they violated prohibition laws. Oh, boy, yeah, remember those days? You couldn't drink adult beverages. Fred Mann committed suicide. 
Now free of his contract, Larry joined the Stooges. Owing to his wife's disliking for housekeeping, the Fines spent years living in hotels until they finally purchased a home in Los Angeles after World War II. One hotel that had been their home base for years was the President Hotel Atlanta City, New Jersey, which has since been demolished. All right, I put it here, pal. Um, Larry was actually trained as a boxer when he was young, had several bouts as an amateur before his father found out and put a stop to it. However, his boxing training did come in handy for his later career as a stooge. Makes sense. Um, now, let's talk Curly for a moment. Notice Jerry before joining the Three Stooges. Brother Mo Howard always called him Babe. That's why I hear him known as Babe sometimes. <coughs> uh, Curly was a member of Three Stooges from 1930 to 1946. Took over from Shemp from and also was replaced by Shemp. Pretty ironic, but true. His fam famous woo -woo 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 was originated in their first Three Stooges short, Woman Haters, in 1934. Um, the final pie fight scene of Halfwit's Holiday, which was Curly's last full one, did not feature Curly because he had suffered a stroke the day the scene was filmed. Halfwit's Holiday came out in 1947. It was filmed in 1946. Um... Now, he did film a scene for the Three Stooges short, Malice in the Palace. As I mentioned, he was a chef, but it was left on the cutting room floor. Thankfully, his publicity photographs, as you saw. Um, according to one of Curly's ex-wives, he was extremely musical. He could take almost anything lying around, make music with it. We saw that earlier. We've seen that in some Three Stooges episodes. He'd take two spoons to play along with the club's band or tear the tablecloth to music. Of course, they would find the cost of the tablecloth added to the bill. Hmm. Well, you know, you gotta pay for it. If you destroy it, if you break it, you pay for it. Now, another one that was known as Babe was Oliver, Oliver Hardy. Although it was a coincidence. Curly was the youngest of the uh, Howard brothers, the eldest being Moe and Shemp. And his mother always called him my baby, which makes sense. Because Shemp was born in 1895, Moe was 1897, Curly was 1903. And they had three, two older brothers than, um, Shemp was the middle of the five, okay? Um, their brother shortened it to babe and used it to constantly tease him. The name stuck him all the rest of his life. Joe Besser, he was funny though, you know? He gets a bad rap, but he was funny in his own right. He just didn't like getting slapped around. He was very much against that. Um, that that original use was actually the actual use of woo 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 was an ad lib. It was written in the later scripts, of course. Um, Curly shaved his head for for the character, but did not like it because he felt it re reduced his appeal to the ladies. He was always chasing the ladies. He was a womanizer. That he was. Hell, he was married four times. Um, during a visit to the cottage hospital in, 19, in January 1945, Curly was diagnosed as having extreme hypertension, retinal hemorrhage, obesity, thus explaining, thus explaining his ragged appearance in all of the shorts released in 1946. In 1947, his last years with the group. Um, we mentioned Curly was shy and withdrawn when not on camera. There you go. And Curly was an avid dog lover. Often brought strays home with him from traveling. My wife would be like that too. No doubt. Um, however, Curly had a full head of hair when he appeared with Mo and Shemp in the Three Stooges short Hold That Lion and like we said that was his last appearance as a stooge. Accident that he had as a child which gave him his limp was a gun accident. One morning he was playing in the backyard with his pistol, had a hair trigger, a trigger, and he accidentally shot his foot and was so frightened of surgery he never got it fixed. Mo was the one that found them. Imagine that. To mask it on screen he developed 
his famous exaggerated walk. Now you know why the Curly Howard had it had the walk that he had. Now speaking of Curly, how about Curly Joe Dorita? There he is, the last stooge. He definitely looked like uh, Curly Howard, no doubt about that. He was a pretty good stooge. The last to pass away, born 1909, passed away just short of his 84th birthday in July of 1993. I remember when he passed away. I remember reading about it. Joe Besser, in those six uh, movies with the Stooges, after their shorts that they had from 1934 to 58, um, Curly never made an on-screen appearance out of character. Wow. Now, Ted Healy, who originated the idea of the Three Stooges' brutal style of comedy, wasn't originally interested in hiring Curly to replace Shemp. Curly had wavy nut, wavy chestnut brown hair and a waxed mustache. No kidding. When he went out and completely shaved his head and eventually his mustache, that's when he, Healy hired him on the spot. Um, Curly didn't get his first job until he was 25 years old, performing as a burlesque conductor for the Orville Knapp Orchestra. During the Long Beach earthquake in 1933, uh, Curly thought the house shaking was a result of a trick that Ted Healy was playing on them and was found by his brother, Mo Howard, pounding on Healy's door, yelling at him to stop whatever it was he was doing. Yeah, obviously, such was not the case. Look at Curly Joe Dorita. Boy, you talk about looking like Curly Howard, huh? Wow. A lot of them smoke cigars, too, by the way. That was a cool thing to do, you know. Once while in Atlantic City, New Jersey, Curly was cracked over the head with a cane by a young boy who thought Curly's head was as tough as it appeared to be in Three Stooges shorts. Wow. Crazy. Obviously, well, you know. Well, they took a beating, though. Now, after Curly's stroke, he was left half paralyzed, unable to work, expensive medical bills. Mo and Shemp and fellow stooge Larry Fine set aside percentages of their weekly paychecks to help them. That's really cool of them to do that. Uh, despite people associating Curly with his derby, he rarely wore it on his short films. Curly was much more frequently seen wearing a flat cap. <clears throat> now, according to Mo, when Curly died, he left behind a wife, two daughters, three ex-wives, his parents. Uh, four brothers, four sisters-in-law, and nine nieces and nephews. Wow. Yep, their parents were still alive when Curly died. Unbelievable. 48, that's too much, that's too young to die. Uh, like Brother Curly with his famous woo-woo-woo and yuck yuck yuck. Shemp also had that well-known quirk. Here we go. Gee, 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 gee. In many of his films. Oh, he did it so well, though. It's hard to impersonate him. Um, Shemp was known as having the Shemp was known as his homely appearance. Let's talk about Shemp. Um, as a publicity stunt, he was named the ugliest man in Hollywood. All right, so Shemp wasn't the most handsome fellow in the world, but by golly, he was ultra cool. Um, now he died in the back seat of a car on the way home from watching a boxing match of a heart attack at the age of sixty. What's crazy is. His phobias. We'll get to that in just a moment. Um, he got the name Shemp when he was a child. When his mother, whenever his mother would say his name Sam, the combination of her heavy Lithuanian accent and abrupt manner of speaking made it come out sounding like Shemp. The name stuck. Um, obviously, he was a Three Stooges member. Uh, this one says 1933 when he was replaced by Curly. Because he left. And then, of course, he came back in 1946. Um, Curly gave the blessing for Shemp to come back to be a stopgap until Curly got better. Unfortunately, Curly never got well enough to continue, so Shemp stayed with the Three Stooges until he died in 1955. Now, speaking of Shemp, the, the phrase to Shemp is meaning to fake, was coined from the actor's name. It was inspired by Columbia's use of an uncredited double 
In order, to, they had to complete several Three Stooges shorts that were left uncompleted at the time of Shemp Howard's death. See, the ones from 1956 that has Shemp in it, he had already died. But they had to finish it up, so they had to use a double for it. Now, Shemp was multiphobic. Many who knew him jokingly said that he was even afraid of his own shadow. Shemp was afraid of everything. He was afraid of cars. He did not have a driver's license. He never drove. Um, he, Larry Fine, Mo Howard, and Curly Howard, I already talked about Hold That Lion. Short, non-speaking. A short, um, very little speaking cameo due to Curly's health issues. Um, Shem's favorite Stooges comedy was Fright Night. That was his first one with the Stooges, and that dealt with boxing. Um, Shem Howard was a huge fan of boxing. There's Joe and Curly Joe. How about that? The last two Stooges. Why not? Um, now, this one's crazy but true. Once when he and his brother Mo Howard as children were left to watch baby brother Curly, um, they turned his baby carriage into a soapbox, soapbox racer and were about to test it out when their parents came home. Ooh, boy. Three Stooges as themselves. In color, too. How about that? I do believe that's Snow White and the Three Stooges, 1961. Featuring Carol Heiss, famous 1956 and 60 Olympic skater. Um, Shemp played hooky from school often, just like uh, Mo did. And his mother would have to come down to straighten things out. When he graduated grade school, it said that he didn't graduate, but that his mother did. Now, when uh, Shemp was six, six years old at a family picnic, he snuck off with a plate of tomatoes and hit a man with them. The man dragged Shemp back, kicking and screaming. Shemp's mother beat the man with her umbrella. Oh, yeah. Physical comedy. They didn't mess around. Um, and Shemp was the favorite stooge of one Alex Trebek. How about that? Now, as a teen, Shemp once crashed his car through the front window of a barber shop. That's early on. It was like a fake car too, if I'm not mistaken. The incident shook him up so much he never drove again in his life. Wow. Yep, Shemp never drove. He was scared to drive, so he wouldn't do it. Kind of sad. I love driving. I do. I hate crappy drivers, but by God, I love driving. It's all about being observant. Have Rocket Will Travel. That was the first feature-length film by the Three Stooges, 1959. Mo, Larry, and Curly Joe. There you go. There's your hunks of the day on Beer and Song of the Day. We're going to bring out the babe of the day that I thought was stunningly gorgeous. And she was with Curly. She was with Shemp. I think she was with Joe Besser as well. Um, the lovely, amazing Christine McIntyre. She was in a lot of Three Stooges episodes in the 40s and 50s. Christine McIntyre, born 1911, passed away in 1984, I believe, at the age of 72. Cancer. She was beautiful, sophisticated. Yeah, baby. Let's bring out that last song for the Three Stooges, shall we? Swing in the Alphabet from 1938. Gentlemen. Not very loud. I'm going to test your mental coordination with a little sit down. I didn't think this show was going to be this long, but office. apparently it is. Right. Second longest episode of Beer and Song of the Day ever. My colleagues will assist. Ready, sister? Get that junk out of here. Come on, boys. Scram. I'll give you the idea in a nutshell. B-A-B-B-E-B-B-I-B-B-I-B-O-B. -E I'll give you the correct demonstration. The lovely Christine McIntyre. Now we'll all join together on the letter D. D-A-B-E-D. 
Chef, what a ladies' man. And you know, Christine McIntyre. There were a lot of babes on Three Stooges. But I think Christine McIntyre was definitely the most popular of them all. That's it for the pictures. Now, Joe Bessel, let's talk about him real quick. The only member of Three Stooges who was more successful in his solo career than with the Stooges. After Shemp died, Mo, Larry, Mo and Larry wanted to continue as the Two Stooges um, before shorts were ready to be filmed. The Stooges made them all remakes with stock footage and with new scenes that included a fake Shemp. Stooges then became three again after Joe joined them, initially because Bessel was afraid of being hurt. Larry offered to take the slaps for him. Oh, he had been slapped around forever anyway. As the making of the films progressed and Bessel became more comfortable with the team and his shtick, he took a share of slaps, eye pokes, nose tweaks, and pies in the face as his predecessors. Obviously, so did Larry. So good to see that Joe Bessel was finally willing to do it because he didn't like that physical comedy at first. Um, when Columbia shut down its shorts department, three students were forced to take the act on the road. Joe Bessel was invited to go. However, he refused because he had to be home to take care of his sick wife. He was not fired, as the legend has it. Joe Bessel was never fired, okay? Remember that. Um, Joe began his career in show business as a song plugger for a St. Louis-based music company. Later became a comedy assistant to the great magician Howard Thurston. And he was the only member of the Three Stooges to use his actual birth name in the act. All the other Stooges, even Ted Healy, used staged or Americanized names. Joe Dorito was called Curly Joe because he resembled early Stooges member Curly Howard, fat and graceful, and because there had already been a Stooge named Joe, Joe Besser. Um... According to Emil Sitka, Emil Sitka, by the way, was in many, many, many episodes of the Stooges. Sometimes he was considered the fourth Stooge. I mean, he was just awesome. He did great things for them. But uh, when Dorita was brought on board the Stooges with the Stooges, he was more or less an employee, not a full partner. Larry Fine, like we said, threatened to quit. Unless Mo made him a full partner, which he did, thankfully. When Shemp died in 1955, Mo wanted to recruit uh, Curly Joe Dorita into the Three Stooges. He couldn't join because he was under contract to Harold Minsky when he was one of the top comics. I wish he wasn't under contract. We could have done without Joe Bessler. I think Curly Joe Dorita was a pretty good stooge. I would have loved to have seen him in some of the shorts. But when Joe left the Three Stooges, Joe Besser, Mo made another attempt to bring Curly Joe into the act. The timing couldn't have been better. Joe had a week left. Joe, Joe Dorita had only a week left on his contract with Minsky. And uh, Curly Joe was able to become a member of the Three Stooges just before they began um, their six feature films. In fact, his gravestone reads, Curly Joe Dorita, the last stooge. In addition to his obvious talent, there was a physical reason why he was recruited, as he was five foot four, same height as both Mo Howard and Larry Fine. And Curly Joe Dorita was the only non-Jewish member of the Three Stooges. He was of English and French Canadian and ancestry. Canadian, eh? It's not taking a beat. Oh, Canada indeed. I'll drink to that. 
Empty as the brain cells on an average anchor pan. Folks, sorry it's so long, but it was well worth it. You know what time it is, right? Damn right, Ram Dr. B. Folks, time to make a feed us to head out so everybody take care of a wicked awesome night and day. Peace be the journey. Don't do anything I went to. Don't get drive my spirit drink on my case stuff. Or somebody else. Drinking and driving is dumber than being an average New York Jets fan. Was dumber than that. And, and a New York Yankees fan, too. Was dumber than that. It was rooting for douchebag cocksuckers like Eli. Eh, any good Tom Brady. Ha! Dream on, jackass. Manning. Or men slapping women. Or animal abuse. Or racism. Or people who watch on bed. Or fake friends. Or anybody that supports the fans or is a member of the Westboro Baptist Church. Things like that are just plain stupid. And definitely deserve a B. Fat. G-F-Y. Also deserves an eye poke. Also deserves. That's right. Fist to the head. They do. And a whole lot more. Woo! <laughs> Well, I'm out of here. See y'all tomorrow. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 I love the Three Stooges, and you should too.